welcome to our Easter Day service at St Michael's. Uh, I'm Sandy Christie, I'm the vicar, it's great to have you here. We normally have a lot of visitors on Easter Day, so I hope we have a lot of visitors to this service today, and welcome to you if you don't normally come. We also normally have a lot of flowers, so some kind parishioners have brought some flowers from their garden, which you can see next to me and behind me, and there'll be some pictures of flowers uh, with music at the end of the service. And there'll be a lot of different things in today's service. Uh, one new development is that our musicians have uh, each recorded different bits of the music in their own homes and it's all somehow been magically put together. And so you might recognise some familiar voices. I haven't heard it yet, but I'm sure it's going to be great. And there are lots of other interesting things to look forward to in our service. So Easter Day is the day when we celebrate the victory of Jesus over evil and death. It's the conclusion of the struggle that was fought on the cross. And for that reason, I think if we just come to Easter Day and kind of join in the celebration without having gone through the preparation of Lent and Good Friday, it can be a bit like a, a marathon runner who joins the course right at the end and just does a couple of laps of the stadium, but doesn't run the 26 miles leading up to that point. We don't really understand fully the joy unless we've... Uh, been through that struggle and normally that's what communion helps us to do it takes us back to the death of Jesus but of course we can't celebrate communion at the moment so I think it'd be good just to start with a prayer just remembering and giving thanks for what Jesus has done for us on the cross before we focus on the resurrection so I'm going to going to pray Lord Jesus we thank you that you came into our world as a rescuer that you lived a very ordinary life and that you willingly gave your life for us on the cross. Thank you that because you died, we can live. We can know that freedom from the price of sin and we can know victory over death and share in that with you. And we pray that we would have a true sense of celebrating that victory today as we gather together in your name. Amen. So Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we're going to start our service with Jason Dalrymple reading from John chapter 20. And then after that we'll have a recreation of the resurrection by some major Hollywood stars. Major Hollywood stars of the future, that is. Jason. Today's lesson is taken from John chapter 20, verses 11 to 20. Jesus appears to Mary Madeleine. Now Mary stood outside the tomb, <clears throat> crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell him, Tell them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Madeleine went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood amongst them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus. He's not there. 
Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. <gasps> Just as he said! Go and tell the disciples. Jane Bendel and we've had the first morning of the church hall being open to collect food bank material and this is a tremendous amount we've collected and Jane's just going to say a little bit about uh, when we'll be open and what people can do. Thank you Jane. Thank you Sandy. Yes this is all collected in one hour Tuesday morning between 10 and 11. We will be here on Thursday between 2 and 3 Thursday afternoon and we hope to keep doing this until our current crisis is over. As you can imagine, the need is very, very great. To begin with, donations have gone down, but the request for food and help has of course gone up in the current situation. So anything you can bring along, we would be so grateful. Obviously it must be unperishable, and toiletries as well as food, would be most welcome. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Hi everybody, it's Marion to do the notices and it's lovely to be with you on this Easter day. And once again, thank you to the huge number of people that have helped put our service together this week. That's a real team effort. So thank you very much to all those involved. And also thank you again to all those people who volunteered to help others in the community. It's a fantastic way to serve one another and to be lights of hope in the community. So thank you. And we really do have lots of volunteers. So if you or you know somebody who needs some help with shopping or whatever, then do get in touch and all the contact details are on the website. So uh, please you know, do that. And I talked last week about doing church differently. So uh, those of you that get the church email, 
Uh, and if you don't get it, uh, you can email me church at se3.org.uk. I love my little visual aid, as you know. And um, so those who get the email will have seen all the different things that are going on. We've, uh, the spa have gone to meet, the Pilate, we've had another Pilates session, uh, and Lauren continues to do lots with the young people. And also new things, um, well, in fact, home groups are starting to meet weekly. And a new thing is we're going to start a prayer meeting weekly on Tuesdays at 8.15, 40 minutes long, and that's it. And it'll be on Zoom. And all the contact details are on my email. And so do join us if you can for that on Tuesdays. And then uh, Carolyn is going to host the first ever St. Michael's coffee morning. And that's going to be tomorrow, Monday the 13th at 11 o'clock. And it should be fun. So again, the contact details are on the church email. So, uh, and you'll just heard from Jane talking about the food bank. So we're going to have those collections uh, for donations every Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday is 10 to 11 and Thursday 2 to 3 in the church hall. So that will be uh, happening and that'll be a great way to contribute to people in need. So that's happening. And then you'll have seen on my weekly email that uh, we added a lot of activities that people can do, some Easter activities and lots of just other activities to do at home. And one of them was uh, to do a, an Easter decoration, which is which you, which you do by blowing out an egg. Now, even though my children are 19 and 21, I thought I'd have a go. So I have. And um, actually the real reason that I've had a go is so that I can say, and here's one that I prepared earlier. So this is my attempt at <laughs> uh, my little egg decoration. And it was lots of fun to do it. We had a lot of a, a lot of laughs doing it. So have a go at that and look at all the other things on the website as well. And then lastly, just a huge thanks to everybody who sent in photos this week. They were circulated on Thursday evening and especially to all our young people, what great photos they provided as well. So that was really a great sense of being a church family together. So that was lovely. And we've got a new theme uh, for this coming week, which is Easter. The theme is Easter and it's things that you have enjoyed over Easter and things that you are thankful for. So have a think about that. Do send your photos in to church at se3.org.uk by a Thursday close of play. That would be fantastic. And we can all enjoy those. And then um, we're going to take a break from photos. In fact, I thought we can't, we mustn't have too much of a good thing. So we'll have a little break. But I know that a lot of people have asked if at some point we can have a theme which is home haircuts. So be prepared for that one, uh, before and afters, please. That would be fantastic. So do save those up. But in the meantime, send in your photos about Easter. That would be great. So that's all from me for this week and look forward to seeing you next week. And now I'm gonna hand over to Sandy. Today, I'm gonna to tell you the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead, John chapter 11. If you have a Bible, do find it and uh, turn to John 11. And when you do that and you look at verse 6, you'll see it starts with a shock. When Jesus heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two days. Two days. He does nothing to stop Lazarus from dying. He could have done. We know that Jesus could heal anyone. And everyone who came to him was healed, and yet Jesus stays there. And when he does go to Lazarus, Lazarus' sisters, Martha and Mary, both say exactly the same thing to Jesus. If you'd been here... They say, my brother would not have died. But Jesus just stays where he was and lets Lazarus die. Why does he do that? There's something difficult to get our heads around here, isn't there? God doesn't always do what we want when we want it. He's not a tame lion, as it says in the Narnia books. Maybe you're someone who's prayed to God about something, something very important to you. And God hasn't given you the answer you want. And you think, well, I give up on him. He's either not there or he doesn't care. But is that a wise response? You know, he's not a tame God. He doesn't just 
do what we want when we want it and we have to take that on board because he's not a tame God we have to face up to the uncomfortable truth that uh, he doesn't always give us what we want even for those he loves it says that Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus in verse 5 and yet he doesn't give them what they seem to need sometimes he allows suffering and death even for those he loves and then in verse 11 he says our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep and I'm going to wake him up and the disciples think he means natural sleep but of course Lazarus is dead why does Jesus use those words falling asleep is he someone who doesn't want to face reality one of those people who talks about passing away or passing on rather than dying well that's a good question hold on to it because we haven't reached the end of the story we now come to our time of confession as 1 John 1 reminds us if we say we have not sinned we make God a liar and his word is not in us God sends Jesus to be an atoning sacrifice for sins, not just for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. So this morning, shall we take a moment of silence to acknowledge our sins and shortcomings before God? When I say, in your mercy, please respond when I say in your mercy forgive us respond by saying Lord hear us and help us in your mercy forgive us Lord hear us and help us Lord Jesus Christ risen master and triumphant Lord we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief we have lived in our, by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and, un, and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Gracious God, in the mystery of your son's death and resurrection, you established the new covenant of reconciliation. Lord, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before our next song, uh, we're going to affirm our faith in God. As Christians, we believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And uh, for centuries, the Church of Christ have used the words of the Creed to affirm our belief. So using the words of the Apostles' Creed that is about to go up on your screen, shall we join followers of Christ across generations and traditions to affirm our faith in God? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to the judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Okay, so next bit of the story, Jesus says, let's go to him, to Lazarus in Bethany. And it's a long way, and when they get there, Lazarus has been in the tomb for four days. Terrible tragedy for this close-knit, loving family. And watch how Jesus responds quite differently to the two sisters, who each say the same thing to him. Martha's the activist one. She goes out to meet Jesus as soon as he arrives and says to him, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus meets her with truth. Your brother will rise again, he says. And I am the resurrection and the life. She says, I know he'll rise again on the last day. But she must have been thinking, but what about now? He's dead. Why didn't you come? And Jesus, you know, looks her in the eye and says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though they die, will live in me. It's about him. This is not the Jesus who uh, is a good moral teacher who never claimed to be God that we often hear about. No, Jesus says this is about me and about your response to me. I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this Martha? Do you? So Jesus meets Martha with truth. Your brother will rise again, I am the resurrection and the life. But with her sister Mary, the quiet one, he hardly says anything at all. He sees her weeping and the people with her weeping. And he's deeply moved, deeply troubled. Right down his guts is what it literally means. And he himself cries, Jesus wept. So this isn't the serene detachment of the Buddhist sage or the far-eyed calm of the mystic. No, his guts are churned up with the pain and anguish of the loss of Lazarus and the impact that has had on those who love him. 
Does God care about our suffering? I think this is the answer, isn't it? So to one sister, truth, and to the other sister, tears. And I guess when we go through difficult times, we need both. Sometimes we need truth, sometimes we need tears, but over time, we need both. But that too is not the end of the story. The reading is taken from the book of John, chapter 11, verses 17 to 37. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now, Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. Teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out. They followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping. He was deeply moved in the spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm the youth minister here at St. Michael's and a really happy Easter Sunday to you. Uh, I've got my very own little Easter bunny here and uh, I'm really excited to share with you a craft this morning that is also um, a way of creatively praying and telling the Easter story. So let's have a look at the craft. So take a piece of paper and first of all you're going to take the top left hand corner and fold it down to the point where it meets the opposite edge. And then you're going to take the top right hand corner and fold it down to meet the corner of the triangle that you just made. So you should have what looks like a bit like a house. Then you're going to fold the whole thing over and in half.
and then to turn it into your paper aeroplane fold down one side and then the other then what I would love you to do is to write a prayer on either the wings of your paper aeroplane or maybe on the inside of your paper aeroplane and fly it in your garden or in your house um, or even fly it towards a brother or a sister or a mum and a dad and if several of you have written prayers and are flying your paper aeroplane you can catch someone else's plane open it up and read their prayer then returning it back to the shape of the paper aeroplane fold down the sides and hold up the um the aeroplane so it's lengthways and then grabbing hold of a pair of scissors we're going to cut open straight down the middle of our folded paper aeroplane and inside we are going to find the Easter story. First of all, we're going to find the lots that the guards cast for Jesus' clothes. Second of all, we're going to find the cross which Jesus died on. Third of all, we're going to find the tomb which Jesus was buried in and today on Easter Sunday was found empty as Jesus' body had left the tomb. And finally, we're going to find a pair of legs. Because this Easter Sunday, we have a choice. Our choice is to either walk with God and towards the cross, or to not realise who Jesus is and exactly what he's done for us. And instead, we'll find ourselves walking alone and away from the cross. So this Easter, our choice is really clear. Do we choose to have Jesus walk alongside us and walk his path and his way as we seek forgiveness for all the things that we do wrong and we recognise the great gift that he gives us in mercy and love through rising on the cross? Or do we choose to walk away and to not recognise him for who he is? I know which choice I'm going to make. One of the key lessons of this season of Easter is for us to be reminded that uh, Christ has destroyed the power of sin and death. Uh, so I'm now going to lead us in a responsory that highlights the truth of Christ's victory over sin and death. Uh, this responsory is based on 1 Corinthians chapter 15. When I say death is swallowed up in victory, Please respond at home by saying, Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The words of Collect for today, Easter Sunday. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son 
overcame the old order of sin and death. So make our things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory. To him with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might now and in all eternity. Amen. And now pass on to Sandy for the concluding part of his talk. Next bit of the story. Jesus comes to the tomb. Again, it says he's deeply moved. Take away the stone, he says. He prays to his Father in heaven. And then he simply says, Lazarus, come out. A very bright, small boy said, it's just as well he used Lazarus's name, otherwise the whole graveyard would have risen up. For Jesus, raising Lazarus from the dead is as simple as waking someone up. That's why he said, I'm going to wake him up. Because when Jesus, who is life, comes, death is helpless. And when we come to know and trust Jesus, death is no more something menacing, hovering, lurking at the edges of our lives. It becomes a gateway, a new beginning, an adventure, you could even say. We don't need to be afraid of it any more than we're afraid of falling asleep. But that is still not the end of the story because Lazarus is still mortal. He's still going to die one day. He has his dying to do all over again. And so Jesus hasn't yet dealt with the, the real problem, which is the reason why we all die. All of us have cut ourselves off from God, who is the one who is life. And so we need someone to rescue us from that. And this is where Jesus really enters into our suffering world. Not just by grieving with us, but by dying for us. What happens next is in verse 45 and if you look at that you'll see it starts with the word therefore in other words this flows directly out of Jesus raising Lazarus therefore many of those who'd come to visit Mary and seen what Jesus had done believed in him they saw that Jesus was the resurrection of the life it wasn't just talk he really could raise the dead just like that and so they put their faith in him and therefore the chief priests and the Pharisees call a meeting. They say, we can't let this go on. And they decide to kill him. Jesus knows that he can only take Lazarus out of the tomb by putting himself in it. But nevertheless, he raises him. And it's the same with us, isn't it? He can only take us out of the tomb by putting himself in it, by dying for us. And he's willing to do that. And when we see that he's willing to do that, not just for the world... But for me, it really changes us. It really melts our hearts. And nothing is quite the same again. So none of us know what the future holds for us. We don't know whether we'll live for a long time or whether we'll die quite suddenly and unexpectedly. We're not given any promises about that. And it's no different for Christians than for anyone else. But what we are given promises about is our eternal destiny. We're promised life. Jesus looks at Martha and he says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even though they die, will live. In other words, death is not death anymore. It's just like falling asleep and it's a gateway to someone much better. So he's promising us life if we trust in him, life eternal. That's where we're heading. And once we know where our journey is final, finally going, what at the end of the story is, then we can handle pretty much anything along the way. We don't need to be afraid anymore. I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus says. Whoever believes in me, though they die, yet they will live, live forever. Let's pray that this Easter, that really gets down into our soul and we understand the life, the eternal life, that Jesus has won for us through his death and resurrection. Now, Carolyn Watkins is going to lead our prayers and then we'll uh, close the, sing our final hymn, uh, that great Easter hymn, Thine Be the Glory.
please join me in prayer. And when I say, when we are weak, please respond, you are strong. Heavenly Father, help us to depend on you during this time of testing, to learn to pray with more compassion, greater discipline and deeper trust, to learn that prayer not only changes situations, but also transforms us. When we are weak, you are strong. We pray for everyone working at the front line against COVID-19, for everyone in the NHS, medics, cleaners, caterers, admin support, for those working on vaccines, making ventilators, manufacturing and delivering urgent resources, for shopkeepers and those delivering goods and groceries, for those in public transport, allowing key workers to move about the country safely. When we are weak, you are strong. We praise you, Father, that we live in a country where resources of food and health care are relatively easy to access. But we pray for those who are finding it hard to buy food because they have little or no income or do not have friends and neighbours to support them. Please place Christians in their path to reveal Christ's love in sharing the gospel and living it out in practical ways. Show each of us where we can better serve you, Lord. When we are weak, you are strong. We pray for parts of the world where communities are particularly vulnerable to the coronavirus, whether through poverty, lack of health care or overcrowded communities where contagion is rife and self-isolation is particularly countercultural. We hold before you densely populated cities across the world, the townships of South Africa, the favelas in Brazil, and ultra-Orthodox communities in Israel. When we are weak, you are strong. Lord, please restore those suffering from the virus to full health and comfort those who mourn loved ones who have died. Holy Spirit, take our prayers into the spiritual battle that is waging in the heavenly realms. When we are weak, you are strong. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have won the victory and we celebrate and proclaim your wonderful name this Easter day. Amen.
before I say the final prayers, I'd like to say thank you for joining us this morning uh, for our Easter worship service online. Uh, please join us again next week uh, for uh, the regular Sunday service at 10.30 a.m. on our uh, YouTube channel. Normally during Easter services, our church building is filled with flowers to celebrate and reflect God's glory. To continue this beautiful tradition, a group from the congregation uh, have assembled uh, some photos from their gardens and from flowers displayed in previous uh, previous years uh, in church. These photos have been carefully put together by Hannah Dunstan and will be displayed on your screens after the service ends. I know that currently we've been, we've been troubled on every side, on every side. Uh, there are real challenges out there, but it's good to be reminded that God's glory, abundance and presence are still very much with us. So please use the images from the flower montage that will be displayed soon to reflect on God's glory, presence and abundance in creation as you continue to celebrate the risen Christ this Easter. Let us pray. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do his will. Working in us that which is well pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us this Easter and forevermore. Amen. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in the peace of Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.